getting behind the artifice of more than half a century of pop culture fairy dust is difficult. The tactile quality of iconography is elusive, it's starlight dancing between your fingertips. And yet, that same quality's legacy for the truly timeless, seminal figures of history is irresistible. It's a collective memory we all share of Elvis Presley shaking his hips on national television for the first time, or Marilyn Monroe standing above a New York City subway grate, waiting for the next gust of air to blow as a train passes. This year we've seen both figures recontextualized by star-studded Hollywood biopics that, like so much of the Dream Factory's output, seem eager to admire show business legends. But that fawning can also be a facade. Whereas the male emblem of 1950s sex got a glorifying piece of hagiography courtesy of Baz Luhrmann over the summer, Andrew Dominic's blonde is eager to strip away the layers of popular fantasy, and just about everything else, until all we're left with is a fragile, scared young woman who was mother. It's a shame then that Blonde is no more interested in being kind, or necessarily self-aware, than a legion of wolves who lit at Marilyn for nearly three hours throughout the picture. Dominic's film might recognize the ugliness of its vision, but it seems to struggle in finding any more compassion or sense of remorse than the studio system did for exploiting a girl named Norma Jean by putting her above that subway grate and into an early grave. At the very least though, you cannot fault the casting. Blonde's biggest salvation is that it has Anita Armas playing the woman above that great, watching her from Marilyn's earliest days in the business to the very detailed, and fictionalized, account of her final hours at the bottom of a bottle of pills. It's even a bit of fitting irony, too, that the most buzzed about element is not the movie star Blonde has ostensibly come to eulogize, but the curiosity factor around the one who seems poised to become an A-list sensation by playing her. All the months and years leading up to Blonde's premiere centered around apprehension in the media over a Cuban woman playing the American movie star. Which is strange since many of the same voices waxing and waning their displeasure have nowhere near the same level of anxiety over an English actor playing Abraham Lincoln, or winning an Oscar for it, nor for that matter when an American played the Princess of Wales, 